This is the new day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord be with you. And also and also with you. It's great to have you all here today for Worship on the Water and for our service here. Uh, and, uh, you know, what a wonderful, wonderful day to be here. A little humid, but uh, it is at least not raining and not uh, scorching. So between the two, that's good. Uh, several announcements. Let me say just a few words and then I'm going to call Bruce up here uh, for announcements. We have several folks, uh, extended kind of church family individuals that we want to make sure that we're keeping in our prayer list with that and you may or may not have heard joe martensic is beginning to recover well they're working on his throat area the speech uh the speech therapist is trying to get him able to to, to eat more with it he has been able to digest a little food but they're working more toward that so joe is in repair and recovery from his uh stroke and so Keep Joe Martinsic in your prayer. Uh, Greg Lawton uh, has discovered that he has cancer, and so please keep uh, Greg Lawton in your prayers for him. Uh, Connie Oliver's son-in-law, Steve, uh, has discovered a um, brain tumor. Similar to his wife, if you remember correctly, we prayed for Connie's daughter a couple of years back. Very similar situation. And Steve has been very specific in his prayer requests. Uh, the doctor is saying, you know, they're, they plan on removing the, the tumor, uh, but as you can well know, sometimes that alters people's experiences and understandings and whatever when it's related to the brain. And so the real prayer request is that it doesn't alter significantly the dynamics of his reality. And so we really do want to pray uh, for Steve. He supposedly has a great attitude going in, uh, and we just want to pray for him definitely with that. And then discovered this morning Marjorie Rouse is sick, has COVID, is that, was, it is COVID. Uh, and so we want to be in prayer for Marjorie Rouse as well. After all that they've been through, uh, it has taken on the physical form and she's sick and we just want to be in prayer for her as well. So anyway, just wanted to share all of those concerns and let you be aware of that. Let me ask Bruce to come up and share with you about the food bank and what all we're doing with the food bank. Good morning. Good morning. Um, just to remind you, uh, August and September is the fundraising time period for the local food banks. This is both Greene County and Putnam County. Um, and LOCC is doing this through, um, through specific donation. So if you make your check out to LOCC or uh, tell Marty if you're sending something by PayPal, uh, and if you can make the check out to LCC, but put it put food banks in the memo line, um, that's that's what's needed. And then uh, we will d divide up the funds that we raise. So thank you very much for your consideration of this request. Yes. Are they still looking for volunteers to help? Um, I I don't know. I don't totally know the answer to that. Some of that I think depends on on how how the donation is actually, um, uh, what, what goes on with respect to the donation, okay? Whether it's just a straight cash donation or cash plus labor. And Ed, let me follow up on your question. Uh, the, at the moment, the distribution does not distribute the way they used to, where you kind of went through the line and gave them different stuff. It's all kind of prepackaged. So now it's really kind of heavy lifting uh, volunteers, which we're not really, <laughs> we're not, we're, we're not necessarily involved in. And so it, whenever they go back to the old way of doing where they disperse the food, I think we'll be volunteering then. But now if anybody's got a really strong back and they want to go, let us know, we'll get them. But I think it's unloading the truck these days is kind of what the volunteers do. It's, it's my understanding with that. Uh, and then did you want to reference about first books since you referenced? A lot of you are going to get an email this morning that I sent, sent out because this is the time of year that we always collect $36 per child for first readers. And um, most of you are in my contact list, so I sent out something this morning. And I, I have a letter uh, to all of you, and then it has the flyer. And it's easier, as last year, um, we found out that if you just wanted to go online and make a, a donation, there's an easy way to do that. Or if you just want to bring your check for $36 or more um, on Sunday, I'd be happy to make sure that it gets to the right place. Thank you. 
So we appreciate God. He's taking leadership on that in the community and want to help support her in ways we can as well. So good to have you all here this morning. Our first hymn today, uh, if you will, take your hymn book. And it is hymn number 128, He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought. If you'll please stand as we sing stanzas 1, 2, and 4. Actually, it's one of the epistle readings from the lectionary. It's James, the first chapter, verses 17 through 27. I'll be reading from the Common English Bible. Every good gift, every perfect gift comes from above. These gifts come down from the Father, the creator of the heavenly lights, in whose character there is no change at all. He chose to give us birth by his true word. And here's the result. We are like the first crop from the harvest of everything he created. Know this, my dear brothers and sisters, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to grow angry. This is because an angry person doesn't produce God's righteousness. Therefore, with humility, set aside all moral filth and the growth of wickedness, and welcome the word planted deep inside you, the very word that is able to save you. You must be doers of the word and not only hearers who mislead themselves. Those who hear but don't do the word are like those who look at their faces in a the mirror. They look at themselves, walk away, and immediately forget that they were what they were like. But there are those who study the perfect law, the law of freedom, and continue to do it. They don't listen and then forget, but they put into practice in their lives. They will be blessed in whatever they do. If those who claim devotion to God don't control what they say, they mislead themselves. Their devotion is worthless. True devotion, the kind that is pure and faultless before God the Father is this to care for orphans and widows and their difficulties, and to keep the world from contaminating itself. This is the word of God for the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. As we enter our time of prayer and meditation, I invite each of us to take a moment of silence, to hear the sounds around us, but to be listening for the still small voice of God speaking to right with each one of us. I'll lead us in a congregational uh, prayer, and then we'll close with the Lord's Prayer. So let us bow for prayer. Once again, O oh God, we've gathered in this place to come and to worship you. And today, Lord, as we have for weeks now, we look upon the news and we see so much suffering and devastation that is around us. We continue to see the dynamic going on in Afghanistan. We see what's happening in Haiti. And we're on the verge of seeing something occur in New Orleans. And Lord, we continue to pray. Pray for your presence in all of those situations, plus others throughout the world, Lord, that don't make our news uh, as strongly, but continue to uh, have uh, devastation and sadness and loss and all the things that we suffer here uh, on this earth. And so, Lord, uh, as these things, as these situations continue to occur, we're looking for leadership and we pray that you will uh, give wisdom to our leaders to make decisions uh, appropriate to each situation and uh, to help those who are vulnerable. Uh, to be with those that are suffering, Lord, and show us ways that we, too, can be a part of that process. Today, Lord, we pray for our own church members who are uh, suffering today. We, we, we pray for Greg Lawton uh, we, we, uh, uh, and pray for the dynamics around his cancer. We pray for Connie's son-in-law, Steve, and just uh, his situation uh, with the brain uh, tumor as well. We continue to pray for Joe Martinsic. His recovery, we pray for Margie's recovery, and all others who are suffering from COVID today, Lord. We lift them up and pray uh, for healing uh, and pray for a cure to this pandemic, an end to it. Uh, we, we pray that uh, it can come to an end, Lord, and we just ask that uh, uh, you guide us in the ways we live during these times. And then we pray for those uh, who are working diligently to find not only cures and vaccinations, uh, but treatments as well. And so just pray for the wisdom to the medical community as they do that. And for our hospital staff and others, Lord, that are uh, way overburdened all throughout the country and even here in Greene County, we just pray for them and their strength. Uh, and we ask, we seek protection for them and, and give them strength during these very difficult days uh, in the healthcare profession. Bless us in all we do and guide us. Guide us in the decisions that we make and the path that we take. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus, the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It was his first day on the job. I'm not sure if you've heard this story. I think I've shared it before, but it was his first day on the job. He was a new assistant in the fruit and vegetable department of a supermarket. Oh, and a woman came up to him and said she wanted to buy a half a head of lettuce. Half a head? God grows these in whole heads. That's how we sell them. The woman persisted, and finally, this associate said, I'll go to the back, and I'll talk to the manager. So he went to the rear of the store, and he said to the manager, There's some stupid old bag out there who wants to buy half a head of lettuce. What should I tell her? And unbeknownst to him, the woman had followed him as he spoke, and he turned and saw her standing right behind him. And quickly he added, and this nice lady wants to buy the other half of the lettuce. Will it be all right? Well, later in the day, the manager caught up with the young man and said, that was the finest example of quick thinking I've ever seen. Where are you from? The boy said, I'm from South Georgia, the home of great football players and America's stupidest people. And the manager looked at him and said, I grew up in South Georgia. And the boy said, and what football team did you play for? 
We had, there have been there times when our mouths have gotten us into trouble. And at various times, all of us suffer from what is commonly known as foot-in-the-mouth disease. Our tongues get us into much trouble. Generally, we don't take too much notice of our tongues. I mean, think about it. Have you ever considered your tongue to be beautiful? I bet you don't even look at it that often. You don't even go to shopping trips for your tongue. You don't buy cosmetics for your tongue. You don't go on a diet or do exercises to get your tongue back into shape. Nobody admires a good looking tongue, nor do they write poetry or write songs about it. And it certainly doesn't appear on the cover of Time Magazine. And yet it is your tongue, more so than your figure, your face, or your clothes that you wear, and even the size of your income that determines whether or not you are a beautiful person. The tongue can make a plain person someone extraordinary. The tongue can actually soothe the agitated temper. The tongue can give hope to the despondent. The tongue can draw your children close to you in affection and love or send them away feeling hurt, criticized, unwanted, and unloved. The tongue can poison a child's confidence and a child's imagination by its negative comments or the tongue gives encouragement and helpful advice. It can make and keep friends, or it can lose them. It can defend a good cause, or it can allow evil to run wild, even encourage that evil to do further damage. It can attract people to Jesus, or it can turn people away from him. The tongue can do so much damage to the reputation of other people. It's easy to blurt out all kinds of things about other people, no matter whether they are true or not. But once, once, but once spoken, words are almost impossible to recall. You, can you can't retrieve a word after it has been spoken. The damage is done, and you can't undo the damage very easily, if at all. The tongue is a small part of the body, but it can do so much damage. James, from our text today, likes it, likens it to a small flame. And like a small flame, the tongue can set a whole forest of lives and relationships on fire, consuming and destroying all that lies in its path. It also, we also know too well how an uncontrolled tongue is able to wreak so much damage in the lives of the people around us. James says that if a person can't control his or her tongue, that their religion is worthless and that he deceives himself. Jesus says something very similar. He says the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart, and these are the things that make a person unclean. Just as a doctor diagnoses a disease by what comes from the patient, so the spiritual and moral condition of a person can be diagnosed by what comes from the mouth. What you hear a person say is a window into the condition of a person's spiritual life. Through our language, you and I, we communicate a lot about ourselves. Paul isn't saying here that Paul isn't saying that Christians are somehow to be dull and boring. No. But Paul isn't talking about wittiness or, or about having a joke or, or using words in an amusing way. That's not what he's saying. 
These things actually make speech interesting and makes it lively. And some people are really gifted at their use of language in that way. Instead, Paul is referring to the irreverent talk that destroys rather than builds up. He's talking about using tongues and speech in a way that God had intended them to be used, namely to express love, kindness, helpfulness, understanding, and sympathy. We are all too aware of just how unruly our tongues can be. In fact, it gets out of control even when we're determined to not let, fly, to not let it fly with harmful language. Only if it, often it is only in reflection or when somebody points it out to us that we suddenly become ashamed, ashamed of the hurt that our tongues have caused. A mother once asked me why her two sons were so insecure and timid, so unlike the other boys that she knew. She didn't realize until it was pointed out to her that she was far too judgmental. She was way, way too critical and was always shouting at her sons. You might say she whipped her sons into submission with her tongue. We too have used our tongues to get at people, to get our own way, to make ourselves feel more important, to put down others. How can we tame our tongues? Of course, the answer that comes to mind based on our own experiences of the tongue uh, that so easily gets out of control, the answer is we can't. Our tongues express the sin that is in our lives and so often control our lives. As much as we try to be ourselves to control what comes out of our mouths, we find that our tongues continue to run wild. And before we realize that our mouths have let out a volley of words that we had determined not to let happen. You can no more tame your tongue by yourself than a wild horse can tame itself. Wild horses are tamed by experienced trainers. And you see, the Holy Spirit is our trainer. Only the Holy Spirit can break our unruly and wild tongues. The Spirit reminds us about the special relationship that you and I, we've been called into by our loving Heavenly Father. At, at our baptism, he adopts us as his own. He has claimed us as his children. He's declared himself to be our loving God. We have been come one with Christ through his death and resurrection. We have been joined together in one faith, one baptism, one Lord and Savior, and the one church. Paul says it to us in Ephesians 4. I urge you then, live a life that measures up to the standard God set when he called you. Through the Bible, the Spirit reminds us of what kind of lives we ought to be living as God's people. The Spirit tells us through the Apostle Paul, for instance, there in Ephesians, do not use harmful words, but only helpful words. No more shouting or insults. No more lying. Do not let your anger, which leads you to say hurtful things, lead you into sin. It isn't fitting for you to use language which is obscene, profound, or vulgar. Your speech should always be pleasant and interesting. Speak the truth in the spirit of love. You see that the Apostle Paul has a lot to say about language and our use of our tongues. And the more he says, the more we realize how often that you and I have not spoken to others with love. We have to agree with James in the text we have today that even though we regard ourselves as religious, that doesn't mean we have our tongues in control. Remember, James says, no one has ever been able to tame the tongue. It is evil and uncontrollable full of deadly poison. One minute we use our tongues to praise God, and then the next to abuse someone. The Spirit of God leads us to repentance, 
The Spirit of God leads us to acknowledge how sorry we are for the way that our speech has hurt others, to turn away from the sins of our tongue, and with his help to use our tongues for the purpose they were intended, to help and to encourage others. The Spirit tells us that even though the sins of the tongue may, would be enough to condemn us by themselves, we have a God who forgives us because of the death of his Son on the cross in our place. We're told that even Jesus was insulted and mocked. And yet Jesus didn't retaliate and throw insults and threats back at them. Nevertheless, as innocent that he was, he suffered and died because of the way that you and I, we use our tongues as well as our many other sins. The Spirit of God helps us every day as we talk and communicate with our family, friends, fellow workers, and neighbors. The Spirit helps us speak with love, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, humility, and self-control. The challenge is no less today than it was in the Apostles' time. I wonder whether it's even greater today. Today we have so many other trendsetters when it comes to what is acceptable. TV and movie producers and influential people in our community are setting the trends that in some ways are very unacceptable for us as Christians. Just because everyone else says it doesn't make it acceptable for a Christian to speak that way. You and I are going to find ourselves failing again and again and again, often quite unintentionally and often deliberately. Thank God that Jesus died for the multitude of sins that we commit with our tongues. Thank God that we have a Savior who has freed us from our sin and made us clean in the sight of God. And for that, we say thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn today it's hymn number 408, The Gift of Love. If you'll please stand as we sing all three verses. And I'll play it through one time. It's the old tune, The Water is Wide, if any of you know that.
forget about uh, giving to the uh, food pantry fund. Please uh, don't forget about that. Don't forget about first books. Please be in prayer for those uh, that we've mentioned in any way that you can help. Please be of help to them as well. As we continue to look toward the uh, dynamics uh, headed toward New Orleans, let's keep in prayer the, the folks that are in the way of that path of that storm as well, and the dynamics around Afghanistan and Haiti and others. Let us bow for prayer. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it's in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning for worship. Thank you for joining us on the internet today. I hope you'll join us again next Sunday at 9 o'clock. We'd love to have you worship with us. Thank you. Thank you.